The light I have here is a Freelux Synergy 1 pass-around light that's been going around to various forum members to play with and review, and that's what I'm here to do today. This is the first review that I'm aware of that features the updated driver with the high CRI Nisha emitter. It's brighter than previous and has better mode spacing too. I didn't buy this light, and by the time you see it, it'll be on to the next lucky person in the pass-around group. Thanks to Benjamin and Ozzy for letting me try this light and show you what it's all about. So here is the packaging the light comes in. And it's a Altoid style tin and it's got Freelux Synergy 1 laser engraved on top. Inside the light's protected with some foam. We can see here below. And it's got a sticker with the battery orientation. More on that in a bit. It's a little bit uh, difficult to know which way the batteries go, and this picture is really helpful. The light uh, comes with a pocket clip on it, and it also comes with an optional uh, little lanyard attachment here with a little uh, lanyard. I'm not a big uh, lanyard person, so I didn't uh, run that. Benjamin is an instant machinist, and he owns his own IT services company. His level of detail and tolerance on the parts are really first rate. You can just tell a lot of time went into the thought and design of the Synergy One. For instance, when you take it apart here, the batteries don't rattle at all. They are just really tight in there. And when, even when you put them in, they don't fall. They kind of just, just ever so slightly glide into place. All the edges here are nicely chamfered and rounded over. It's really just this nicely built light. We look all over. The tail cap here we can see it's just really nicely built. All the aluminum parts are made using a Fennec Robo Drill in Benjamin's garage here in the United States. My version here is tumbled aluminum and it's been clear anodized. Tumbling is super consistent. You can almost see it almost looks galvanized finish on here. It just adds some depth to the anodization. Even the clip here is tumbled, which I really like because it helps hide any scratches. As I mentioned, you can swap out the clip for a lanyard attachment and attach your own lanyard. The shape of this light is different and hard to describe without seeing it. It's a side-by-side -side battery configuration, as you saw, and it's a little bit bigger than a Bic lighter. I brought out a Lumen Top tool here just to kind of compare. The tool is a one AAA light. You can see the tool is a little longer, um, obviously much different in diameter. Very similar in uh, head size. The end profile here is almost a figure eight, as you can see, maybe a little better on this side. With the outside being a bit wider than the middle, and the top has some nice jimping on the machining here. It really lets you lock in the light. And this is how I prefer to carry the light in my hand. I just, it fits naturally like this. Uh, it fits in the left hand as well. I'd swap the pocket clip around, but uh, you can see it's just a nice fit in the hand. Your finger naturally falls in the bottom there. Your thumb locks into that jimping on the top, and there's a little bit of jimping on the bottom there where your index finger locks in at. The top here almost has this hexagonal shape here. All the corners are rounded off, the top being just a little bit sharper than the other sides. And then the bottom half here is a lot more rounded but you still got a flat, so the light sits on nicely on its top flat, and it balances pretty nicely on the bottom flat. It's a little le bigger, so it's a little less stable. It also tail stands nicely. It does not stand on its face due to the not symmetrical shape. The bottom area here, the edges are rounded, and I think this is really so you can hold it like this to unscrew and screw on the uh, tail nut here to change the batteries. The nut here is cut kind of like a gear. It's just a neat shape. It is threaded into a brass rod that keeps the entire light together. And as I mentioned, there are two O-rings on this tail cap section. And inside, you can see there is a positive and minus marking for the battery. And uh, They've also got a negative lockout there, so even if you did put a negative battery in wrong, it, the light wouldn't make connection and do any harm. 
The light does have a few engravings on it. You've got a reload button with an arrow, so you know which way to turn the knob and a make ready to know which way to tighten it. Kind of just a neat touch. Then you've got Synergy 1 up here, the light's name, and you've got the Freelux logo there at the top. It's nice, subtle engraving that lets you know what the light is. I believe this is an older prototype body because inside it doesn't feature the positive negative on the uh, body tube section. I think that's a nice improvement and one that kind of solves the problem knowing which way to install the batteries. I think a keyed approach would also work really well so you can't put the uh, tail cap on wrong. I do like the little pad in there. And just a size comparison here with the dollar bill to kind of show you how big it is. This light is using a Nisha 219C high CRI LED in a fairly warm tint. It's probably 3500 Kelvin maybe, it would be my guess. It's using a double anti-reflective coated lens and underneath is a small short reflector that has mild orange peel on it. The beam pattern I think is nice for an EDC and if it actually shows up pretty well here on my video lights. It's almost similar to a TIR optic where it's got a hot center but a dimmer spill. And it's a little hard to see the spill um, here, but you get the idea. I think this is a great type of beam for EDC. It's enough light to see at a bit of a distance, but also wide enough to see around you too. For me, I tend to use this style of light when I'm under a desk at work or looking in the mailbox at night or quick walks with a dog, things like that. As I mentioned earlier, the Synergy One very recently received an updated driver that improves the UI and output. The new Nisha driver has the following outputs at 30 second intervals. Low is 1.4 lumens, medium is 25 lumens, and high is 125 lumens. Here are my night shots for the Freelux Synergy One. And I'm pointing down just almost at my feet here. This is about 1.4 lumen Nisha high CRI LED. You can see it's a nice beam pattern with a pretty hot center. And if I pan up, you can see it fades away pretty quick. But if I bump to medium here, it's a nice beam. It covers lights my deck up pretty nice. It lights everything around me decently. Um, you can start to see the neighbor's fence just fine. Um, this is a very functional amount of light for an EDC task. And last is high. It's about 125 lumens if I remember correctly. You can see that hot center. Lights up the neighbor's shed nice. Anything on my deck here, it's plenty bright. If I pan up a little bit and over, we can see the tree has dropped all its leaves. You can see the side of the house. It's just a nice, very usable EDC beam. But if we go to the tree, um, above there, it's struggling to light that up. In real life, it's not too bad. You can see the outline of the tree, but it's not super bright. So again, here is low. You can just kind of start to see the deck. Medium. And high on the Freelux Synergy One. For my runtime tests, I use two Amazon Basic Nickel Metal Hydride rechargeable batteries. High was a very consistent output for 55 total minutes before a rapid decline that lasted 5 minutes. A total runtime was 61 minutes before the light turned off. And this was pretty respectable for a light outputting 125 lumens on two AAAs. The medium runtime was a little bit more what I'd expect to see out of a nickel metal hydride uh, battery. You got a typical S discharge curve. Total runtime was 525 minutes or eight and a half hours. Most of this was at about 65% relative output and decreases were small and smooth. Low output was only 1.4 lumens, so it lasted a very long time. It's the longest runtime I have tested with my ceiling bounce app, just shy of 3000 minutes or 50 hours. The graph here has one spike that I ha that's an error. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's from, but uh, the last 500 minutes or so did see a steep uh, decline before the light decreased in total output. UI is very simple on this light. You get low, medium, and high in that order. One thing uh, I have to notice is with this updated driver on low, when I first turn on the light, 
I get a flash, and let's see if I can get it to kind of do it on video here. And it doesn't really show up on video very well. This is something that Benjamin's aware of and working on. Um, it seems to be because of that ultra low, low output. To me, it, it's not a very bright flash. It's only maybe half of the output of what medium is. And it's super brief. It doesn't bother me at all. So how does the Synergy one carry? The design is well thought out. I like it in a right small jeans coin pocket and tend to hold it in my left, or my right hand is kind of a pistol grip here. So I'm pulling it out of my right hot pocket and holding it kind of like this. That's just me. You could you can hold it a lot of different ways. It it fits pretty nice like this. Um, or but for me, naturally is this way. When I do this, the jimping on top, my hand locks in nice. At the bottom, I get grip from just a little bit of jimping down there. It just locks in pretty nice, feels nice. Ever since my surgery, my phone lives in my left pocket. And when carrying this light, I just really like to grab it with my right there. It doesn't, it's not hard to come out or anything. But if I did put my phone in my right pocket, chances are I'd scrape or scratch the screen as I drew it out over the uh, clip here. So if you are a right phone person, this might not be the light for you, or you might need to carry it on the left. I didn't like to carry the light in a full-size pocket just because of its width. It took up too much room, but um, not a huge deal either. Other than that, it carries nicely. For me, it's comfortable to sit in, in an office chair uh, with the light in my pocket, and I was worried the seat belt in my car would interfere, but it doesn't. So for me, the pros of this light are, it's made in the USA with fantastic machine tolerances. I'd love to see a made in the USA somewhere on it. I was thinking maybe inside the uh, inner well of this nut here. That's where all, a lot of the other engraving is. I just, if an, if an item's made really nicely like this and it's made in the USA, so many flashlights are made overseas, I'd love to see a, uh, just a little visual outside indicator that it's made in the USA. I could see uh, maybe a flag or something like that going somewhere on it too, if a user wanted maybe up front here with a flag flying. I think it'd be a neat touch. Um, I know for the 4th of July, he did a uh, special red, white, and blue edition that I do think did have a flag on it. While my version is clear anodized, I've heard fantastic things about the colors of anodizing being offered and how well it's done. I know uh, Benjamin didn't care for the anodizing done by third parties, so he learned to do it himself and just made it perfect. If I end up getting one of these, I'll definitely have to get some with some color. And I like how upgrades are available, and they're small. There are things like anodizing and a titanium pocket clip over steel. I think that'd be really cool if you got a silver one or maybe a black one to do some flame anodizing on a titanium clip. So for me, the cons are the switch is mechanical and takes a good amount of force to use. It's loud. If I hold it up to my mic here, you can hear uh, the loudness. And the battery polarity markings on the older models um, are a little bit harder to uh, notice, and you've got to pay attention when putting batteries in this light. I think a keyed approach would be a good solution here for future models or maybe an upgrade. My conclusion is the Freelux Synergy One is a fun little custom EDC flashlight for a maker who wasn't into the flashlight scene like many of us are. A ton of thought went into the ergonomics to make it a unique light that feels good in the hand and pocket, while being very functional at the same time. The fit, finish, and machining quality are all top-notch and easily beats production lights. Version 2 of the driver only improves this light by offering more output of revised UI and makes it very simple and more enthusiast-friendly by being linear and having a true moonlight mode. If you don't follow Freelux on Instagram, I'd strongly encourage you to do so. I'll have a link in the description. Benjamin does a great job of posting nearly every day, showing you what he's working on, new products, the build process, and pre-sale notification. This light's being built in batches, and so far it's been super popular. So if you want one, you may have to watch closely so that you can get uh, notified when a batch is about to drop and get it on, on that order quick. Freelux has recently launched a second flashlight product, the FML, which takes some of the Synergy One ideas, but instead of being an EDC, it's a work light with a magnetic base and the lights on a flexible arm, and it's scaled to run on a 
AA battery for increased runtime. In my opinion, Freelux is definitely a brand to keep an eye on. His designs and ideas in the flashlight game are only getting better. I wouldn't be surprised if Freelux becomes the next Grimsmo knives type company, growing from a garage shop to hiring a couple of employees, upgrading machines to produce more new designs, all while documenting and sharing the process on social media. Definitely keep an eye on this company and pick up one of the designs if you're into custom lights or think this looks cool. I'll have a link below to the website, his Instagram, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and liking these videos. It's you guys who do that that help me to be able to bring fun new things like this and this Synergy One to you. Thanks for watching.